In Laboratory 9, we'll be measuring the speed of sound. Sound is a compression wave in the air, or in other gases or liquids, even in solids. There is a speed for a sound wave. And we'll measure the speed of sound by banging a couple chords at one end of a, a road, and it, farther down the road, a long way down the road, students will be measuring how long it takes for that sound to reach them to time that time. We'll be able to see the boards banging and we'll be able to time the difference. There's a good bit of error so we're going to wind up taking a lot of measurements in order to get an accurate result. This is a road that we'll be using to do this particular experiment. This is a team with the boards. Uh, they'll bang the boards over their heads so that we can see it clearly. The timers can see it clearly. Uh, they'll be flagged by someone with a towel to tell them to bang the boards. We usually leave a, a small team down at the head end of the road to bang the boards to relieve each other in case anybody happens to get tired. Looking back, it's a little bit difficult in the morning sun for a morning lab. We'll be measuring the distance on the ground using a uh, surveyor's wheel, a measuring wheel. The measuring wheel will tell us how far we've gone. And by timing the time difference between seeing the boards clap and hearing the boards clap, we can know how quickly the sound reached us. It's a little challenging. Sunglasses and hats are recommended in this particular lab. Definitely recommended because you're, especially in the morning class, you're looking into the sun. And so we'll usually start by going out to 350 meters. Uh, a number of students will have timers, and so we'll get a bunch of times, and we'll then use the median time. The median time will help eliminate outliers. There's a group of students watching for the boards to clap and then timing until they hear the bang. Timing from seeing to hearing the boards clap. And uh, out at 395 meters, you can see we've got times of around 0.98, around one second there. And we stop, do some times, then walk, keep walking out farther. So each time we stop, we take some measurements. Uh, where we stop, the particular distance we stop at will vary. Uh, sorry, 375, I guess that is in that particular sheet of paper, not 395. Uh, here we're measuring out near the gym. And we're getting some measurements up in the 400s out here, probably up around 425 at this point. Um, and we keep on going. Uh, I don't have images from all the terms we've taken data, but uh, this is a mixture of different terms. But here's a group out at the gym. We do have to watch out for cars and traffic when we do this. And so what we're getting is the same thing as lab 2. We're getting a time for the sound to reach us and a distance. And by getting a group of time and distance marks, we'll get a line on a graph that will tell us the speed of sound. We're essentially rolling a marble at the speed of sound down the road. But instead of a marble, we're obviously using a sound, the clapping sound. Now, it might seem hard to believe, but the human eye can actually see the boards clap from out here, even though the camera makes this look like it must be impossible at this point. We are now 500 meters from the clappers, and yet we can actually see, just barely, the boards clap if, if you've got good 2020 vision. And so we're out at around 550-some meters here, over uh, half a kilometer away, and the time for the echo to reach us can be quite long at this point. It's over a second, over one second to reach this location out here, this far from the clappers. But it is possible to see them and time them. And so we'll gather all that data and then we'll go sit down. We'll calculate the median time for each of the distances. There we modified some distances and Here's how we usually sh share the times and distances uh, with the days before. Social distancing was the only distancing to be done. But we're gathering, we're sharing the times that, that we've gathered. And here's some of the data over the terms that we've, we've gathered. Uh, that particular term there, we had a large number of data points. We did a, a few timing measurements 
at a lot of different stops. Later, we shifted to doing more time measurements at fewer stops. It proved to be just as accurate. And so these are cases where we did fewer. And in some cases, weather or other events prevented us from getting more. They we were shut down early some terms by rain. Rain blocks sound transmission. So if rain falls, we can't uh, gather data. It blocks the sound. We can't hear the boards clap if we're standing in the rain. Uh, these are some uses of box plots that uh, Desmos now supports to show the spread in the timer's data. And also possible to do this on the portable app. Well, if we are unable to gather our own data during this lab, you can use this data from spring 2020. Remember, the first column is time in seconds between seeing the boards clap and hearing the sound reach the ears of the timers. And the second column is the distance. So this table looks just like the table from Laboratory 2, time versus distance. And the points are, indeed, uh, you can see them there in this screenshot, they're roughly linear. We're using the median because the average is more affected by outliers. And we do get some extreme outliers on the timing. Some people a little bit fast in the trigger, some people a bit slow. And so to eliminate the high and low outliers, we use the median. The median is a measure that's referred to as being insensitive to outliers. One outlier cannot affect the median because it just looks at the middle number. But the average can be very highly affected by a single outlier. So this, you can use this if we're unable to gather our own data on that day or if you're unable to join us on that day. This is the data that you can use to produce your laboratory report for Laboratory 9. And the slope of the line will be the speed of sound. You will get the speed of sound from the slope of this uh, line. And you can compare that to the expected slope on that day, which is right up at about 348 meters per second. It, was, uh, it varies with temperature, but based on the temperature that day that this data was taken, the known speed of sound would be about 348. So you can get a raw error and see what your raw error was, your slope minus the 348, and you can get your percentage error, if you remember that from uh, the earlier exercise in raw and percentage errors. You can actually determine uh, the uh, speed of sound. I'll write that up and get that uh, turned in as a full lab report with an introduction and equipment list. That orange thing was a surveyor's wheel. The students had stopwatches and a couple boards. Write the procedure uh, best as you can based on what you saw in the video and uh, include your graph, uh, include a table with the caption. Remember to put in the caption, what does T1 mean, what is D1? T1 was in seconds, D1 was in meters, D1 in meters this time. And uh, you can then put in your Desmos analysis on a linear relationship. I'll let you figure that out at this point in the term, but ask, do ask if you have questions. And uh, I'll wrap up with a conclusion, looking at how close do we get to the actual speed of sound? We expected 348, how close did we get?